You still know how to make an entrance. Batman is a troubled hero, and past Arkham games haven't shied away from exploring his dark side. Arkham Knight is no exception. In this open world adventure, the caped crusader growls his way through one confrontation after another in which he must question his role in Gotham's current crisis. We've seen this before. The game covers so much familiar thematic ground that you can only say, I know, I know, the many, many times you're reminded that Batman's brand of justice puts those he loves in harm's way. It's fortunate, then, that Arkham Knight, for all the areas it revisits, features the qualities developer Rocksteady has infused its previous games with. Superb production values, hard-hitting combat, and a wonderful sense of freedom as you soar above the skies of Gotham. There is one iconic object looming over the freedom, however, and that is the Batmobile. For the first time in this series, you can leap into the famous vehicle and zoom down the streets of Gotham. The driving itself is slick and satisfying, but there's no beating the incredible rush of using your line launcher to fling yourself through the sky, not to mention that taking the air is usually faster. As a result, Arkham Knight is constantly trying to justify the Batmobile's presence. Particularly in the latter third of the story, you're constantly forced to get behind the wheel and take part in tedious vehicular battles against remotely manned drones. When you first engage in this kind of combat, which turns the Batmobile into the world's most agile tank, it's a delight. But in spite of the upgrades you earn over time, EMP blasts, the ability to hack enemy drones, and so forth, the Batmobile battles never become more interesting, just more monotonous, as they seem to go on forever. The Batmobile is also the centerpiece of a number of mediocre boss encounters and all manner of puzzles. It's forced upon you at every turn, even in the many challenges Riddler provides you. So don't be surprised if you end up muttering to yourself, too much Batmobile. Arkham Knight is at its best when you're given the freedom you both need and deserve. What a treat it is to look down upon this beautiful and derelict city, which has been deserted by most citizenry due to Scarecrow's most recent threat to release a hallucinogenic toxin into the streets. Batman is beautifully animated and an absolute joy to control. To soar towards Man-Bat and tackle the Shrieking Beast, and to zip to higher vantage points only to descend onto a rider and deliver a hard kick, these are the moments that represent Arkham Knight at its very best. Hand-to-hand oh. -hand combat continues to set the bar high, and is so hard-hitting it's difficult to believe the near-constant reminders that Batman isn't killing anyone. But melee battles feel so, so good, giving Batman's fists as much raw power as any hammer or club. Stealth combat sequences, which offer astounding flexibility in how you approach enemies, are as good as ever. Slinking through vents, taking down a goon, and zipping away is as rewarding as it is to sabotage your armed foes with your disruptor rifle, causing their weapons to malfunction and leave their owners open to attack. Smart level design and a large array of gadgets, a remote electrical charge, a hacking device, and so forth, keep each stealth room as interesting as the last. Arkham Knight's most memorable sections deviate from the norm and vary the pace. Batman pieces together the past by investigating crime scenes and examines dead bodies for clues to their identities. The resulting puzzles are clever, and the related tasks, such as rewinding and fast-forwarding security footage, make you feel like an active participant in a real analysis. The game constantly digresses, asking you to team up with comrades like Nightwing and Robin to deliver cooperative beatdowns, and to perform all number of secondary missions, which incorporate villains like Penguin, Two-Face, and Firefly. Arkham Knight is loaded with villains, actually, including the one that gives the game its name, Arkham Knight himself. His identity is meant to be the game's greatest mystery, but conspicuous foreshadowing and a reliance on age-old superhero cliches make every supposed surprise easy to guess hours before it's actually sprung on you. There are some tense story beats and moving events, but your two primary goals, to stop Scarecrow's evil toxin plot and to confront and unmask the Arkham Knight, are way too predictable to be compelling. And because the game loads up on repetitive combat encounters towards the story's end, both in and out of the Batmobile, there's an air of tedium surrounding what should be the plot's greatest reveals. There's no questioning Batman Arkham Knight's attention to detail. Enemies remark upon how many fallen comrades they've countered thus far. 
Batman drifts through Gotham like a hot knife glides through butter and exhibits the exact right amount of stickiness as he approaches surfaces. But it's worth noting that what Arkham Knight does well is what Arkham City also did well, and that game nailed the particulars better than does Arkham Knight. Nevertheless, this is an entertaining game that makes up for its lack of impact by refining the fundamentals. It's over, hero. Goodbye.